welcome to 5-Minute Family Law. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the federal legislation and the provincial legislation on family law. At this point, you're probably wondering why is it that two levels of government both have authority to pass laws about the same re about the same subject? And the answer is it's because of the Constitution Act 1867. The Constitution Act is the document that made Canada a country, and among other things, it also divides up the powers and responsibilities involved in running a country between the federal government and the provincial governments. So, under Section 91, the federal government has power over exciting things like the postal service, the census, and statistics beacons, buoys, and lighthouses, uh, but it also has responsibility for the criminal law and, from a family law perspective, marriage and divorce. Now, Section 92 uh, is the part that talks about the powers the provinces have, and the provinces have responsibility for the establishment and maintenance of reformatories, prisons, and hospitals. Uh, more importantly, they have responsibility for the licensing of shops, saloons, taverns, and auctioneers. And, from a family law perspective, they have responsibility for the solemnization of marriage in the province, which is a fancy way of saying how people get married, as well as jurisdiction over property and civil rights. So what that means is that you have two governments with parallel jurisdiction over some, but not all of the same things. And so uh, in, from a federal perspective, we have three important laws. Uh, the Civil Marriage Act, the Marriage Prohibited Degrees Act, and the Divorce Act. So uh, the first two have to do with how families are formed. The Civil Marriage Act is the law that allows same-sex couples to get married just exactly the same way as opposite-sex couples get married. The Marriage Prohibited Degrees Act is about the degrees of relatedness within which you cannot be in order to marry. Uh, that law says that you can't marry your brothers and your sisters, your parents or your grandparents, but you can marry cousins, especially if you like the sound of banjo music. Um, the Divorce Act is the most important one from a family law lawyer's point of view, and that act talks about four basic subjects. Divorce, parenting of children after separation, the payment of child support, and the payment of spousal support. Now, from a, from a provincial perspective, uh, remember that bit about the solemnization of marriage? Well, each and every province has a version of the Marriage Act. And the Marriage Act says who can marry people. It sets out the minimum age you have to be in order to validly marry. It talks about the number of witnesses you have to have. It talks about the vows you have to say. And it talks about things like uh, whether you have to have a marriage certificate. Um, from a family law perspective, uh, in British Columbia, we have one-stop shopping, right? So there's one law that's related to family breakdown. That's the Family Law Act. So just like the Divorce Act, the Family Law Act talks about parenting after separation, child support, and spousal support. But that's where the similarities end, uh, because it also talks about determining who the parents of a child are, uh, how children's property is managed while they remain minors, and it talks about the division of family property and family debt between spouses. So um, you can see that these two laws, the Divorce Act and the Family Law Act, co cover some, but not all, the same subject matter. Well, if you thought that was complicated, it gets a little bit more complicated. So, the Family Law Act applies to everybody who's in British Columbia who has an issue with parenting children, determining the parentage of children, the payment of support and the division of property, and debt between spouses. Now, the Divorce Act, on the other hand, only applies to people who are or were married to each other. Um, and specifically, the Divorce Act is the only law that talks about divorce. And so what that means is if you're married, the Divorce Act applies to you, especially if you want to get divorced, and so does the Provincial Family Law Act. On the other hand, if you're not married, but you are, for example, a common law partner, or you are a parent of a child, or the guardian of a child, the Family Law Act applies to you. 
So that's the federal and provincial legislation in a nutshell. And it gets even worse because there are two levels of trial court in British Columbia, but one of them can deal with the Divorce Act while the other one can't. And the other one that can't deal with the Divorce Act can deal with some issues under the Family Law Act, but not all. And that's what we'll talk about in the next episode about the trial courts of British Columbia and how family law disputes are resolved. Thank you.